Hi everyone, Anya here and uh, welcome to exam time and I'm aware that it's a new exam this time because you have a new syllabus but you also have sample papers so this is what I'm going to look at today, some of those sample papers and have a look and see if we can help with some of the wording and choices that you might make and so on. So let's look at the Leaving Cert examination sample paper. Art, Visual Studies, Higher Level, 2 hours, 30 minutes, 150 marks for three questions. And we're going to focus on Section B, Europe and the wider world. This question takes 50 marks. Question 10, Realism, Impressionism and Post-Impressionism, asks to what extent did invention and innovation impact on the subject matter, process and materials of the artists who worked between 1850 and 1900? Refer to named artists and artworks of this period. So you're looking at invention and innovation, named artists and artworks, and then check the impact on subject matter, process and materials. Now, for that question, it's a really good idea to make a plan and carefully choose the information in line with the question you've been asked, which is all about invention and innovation. And then ask yourself questions like to what extent did invention and innovation, how much impact did it have? What kind of impact did it have? Then what was invented? And what kind of innovation? Get them all down in your plan. So plan a good opening sentence. I always find that this helps with the writing. If you have something, you are set it and go. So plan a good opening sentence. You could start by asking yourself the question, how much impact did innovation and invention have? Would you answer quite a lot? Uh, maybe a very large amount? Or you could say something like, it was pivotal. And you could use different words for that. You could say, it had a key, crucial, fundamental, decisive impact on artists and artworks. So now, which artists and artworks do you think best demonstrate the impact of innovation and invention on subject matter, process, materials? Would you choose, say, Claude Monet or Edward Manet or Edgar Degas or Auguste Renoir or other artists? When you've chosen and when you've made some decisions, now put it in context. Give us the background before you begin so that we'll understand where everything came from. For example, before 19th century France, you had the French Revolution and the king and queen were executed in public, bringing huge upheaval to society. This was followed by Napoleon, who took over for a while and even made himself emperor. But this brought a considerable amount of war and as well as periods of peace to France. This collapsed in 1815, so society was back turned upside down once more. All this had an effect on society, and by the time we get to 1860, we have a new middle class. They have gained their wealth due to the Industrial Revolution, but these people were a little bit insecure. The art market was dominated by collectors from the new middle class insecure and fearful they looked on anything radical with great suspicion and that included new art so they depended on experts in the academy and the academy favored safe classical subjects so what was academic art let's see if you can explain that one The Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture was established by the King of France in the 17th century. After the French Revolution, the name was changed to the Academy of Fine Arts. The École des Beaux-Arts, the School of Fine Art, became part of this. 
it continued to promote the classical style. Now, every year, a huge exhibition in Paris was held to show the works of those who had been successful in gaining admittance to this. And a jury of academians chose the works. And they chose the works that were safe, with a high moral content and kind of virtuous painting, with a, with a message usually was very popular. And people flocked to the exhibition of the Salon every year to see the kind of paintings that they expected to see and really were not at all interested in anything shocking. They expected the safe classical subjects and in this we can see the work of Thomas Couture. Now he has chosen this huge painting, it's giant size, and it is about the Romans here, the decadence of the Romans when they had descended into drinking and bad behaviour. And we can see that even the statues, you can see the statues around here of old Rome, they're even disapproving of the bad behaviour. So it has a very high moral overtone on, on behaviour and sinking into decadence. And it also is slightly referencing Fra French society of the time to suggest that things were going a bit astray. The Industrial Revolution had gained a lot of traction in England because of the political situation in France. But by 1860, it had also arrived in France and it brought with it huge changes to everything, including society. And some of those changes came directly from England because it brought over across the channel visitors in their droves, like they used to come before the revolution, now they were back again, on the new steamships and paddle steamers that you can see in this one. And on those ships came artists. Artists who in England had enjoyed painting out of doors in this new way of going outside with paints and easels and painting en plein air became the word in French. Now, one of the chief innovations of this time in France was the complete overhaul of the city of Paris. Huge areas were demolished to make room for wide boulevards and streets and buildings, parks, quays and bridges. This had a huge effect on art and artists. It, it affected subject matter very much, for example. We can see the work of Berthe Morisot, and she could paint in the park because a woman at that time would not have been able to go outside on her own. It simply would have been unacceptable for her to sit and paint like her male colleagues. But the park gave her the freedom to paint out of doors, and we can see she's painting in the impressionist way. If we look at the brush strokes here behind her on the water, the light on the water, like all the other artists of the Impressionists, they were capturing that one moment in time, that fleeting image of light reflecting on water. And we can see the influence of photography on her painting. We can see the diagonal line here cropped as it would have been in a photograph. And to accentuate the feeling of speed, and the fleeting moment, she also has included a carriage here in the distance, showing the very popular Tour de Lac of the carriages going right round the lakes in the new Bois de Boulogne. The ladies, of course, are also dressed in the latest innovative fashions of that time, 1879. Part of the, that land was a new race course. You could choose some of these paintings if it interests you because Edward Manet and Edgar Dega, for instance, were very, very interested in the horses. You can see here Edward, Edward Manet's racing, getting the speed and the one moment in time of the, of the horses racing. And Edgar Dega, of course, and a very innovative surface here that Dega was using. Very light paint, very mixed down with turpentine and catching not so much the race in Dega's case, but the horses at the start of the race when they're a little bit giddy and moving about. And he has given us those beautiful shadows on the ground, matching the legs there of the horses. Again, influenced by photography, where we can see the sort of cutting off at the edges. 
Now the railways coming out of Paris was a huge change, a huge change. Now the artists could travel to the countryside with all the people who were going out to Bougival and other leisure areas along the river. And in the summer of 1869, Monet and his friend Auguste Renoir took the train to the popular bathing spot of La Grenouillère. And we can see both artists were painting together and their works are almost identical. They're both using the new, what came to be known later as the Impressionist style, where big slabs of paint, big blocks painted here with us with a brush stroke, one brush stroke each. And you can see both are using the same brush strokes, the loose brush strokes. And this was really where Impressionism developed. Also, you can see Auguste Renoir painting another uh, riverside scene. These are ordinary people. These are everyday people sitting around just having fun. Contemporary people of that time, his friends, other artists, and even his girlfriend here with the dog. In the distance, you can see he's included one of the new railway bridges and some of the sailing boats with the white sails. White sails indicated sailing as a leisure sport, and this had become very popular in England and now was linked to France as well. Another influence of invention and innovation was on process. And if we're looking at process, I think we really need to look at Edward Manet because he began to paint with a very different process. He had been given an academic training, but as soon as he finished and opened his own studio, he changed all that and began to paint in a new and very modern way. His process was quite different. He took some of the very well-known paintings of the Renaissance and gave it a very new look. Olympia was a take on a, on a well-known Venetian painting. He's using a very different process to the academic way of painting. He's now using large, loose brush strokes and even very light areas of canvas. But the main changes that he used were in the contrasts of light and shade, instead of the carefully constructed perspective and smooth academic shading. He was influenced by the new art of photography. So the frontal or flat lighting popular in the studio bleached out the flesh tones. And this created a sharper contrast between light and dark, which reduced the grades of tones. Now you can really see it there that the, the color is almost gone from that figure. And so that's the reason she looks flattened out. It was also the reason he got so much criticism now, as we've said before, photography was a very fashionable art form and artists use it all the time. You can see the influence on uh, Edgar Dega again in this painting around the edges here where he has cropped the painting and even the figures standing here. They're caught that moment when the camera catches people, like, for example, she's scratching her back here. Japanese woodblocks were another very interesting innovation of that time. The prints were very simple and the artists were very affected by the everyday scenes and the way of presenting them. And again, the cutting off at the edges was a very new way of showing work and it very much influenced the artists. Painting out of doors, of course, was a completely new process as well. And this was made possible by the artist being able to travel more, more easily. You can see Claude Monet's early work here, painting simply what he saw out of doors. And in this one, he's including very innovative features where we can see the boats on the horizon along here. And these are the cross channel as well as transatlantic steamers. And in his painting, he's making quite a contrast between these very new and modern ways of travel to this older, the older boat here, the working boat, the fishing boat with the red sails, because now the leisure yachts had white sails. Now, another very innovative way of painting was done by Auguste Renoir. Auguste Renoir, of course, pushed that process right out and spent one whole summer, the summer of 1876, 
painting this painting, the dance at Le Moulin de Galette, completely on the spot, on location. And we can see in the painting there, the dappled light that he has captured, making the whole painting move, as it were, with the dancers. New materials contributed to a new way of painting. The French easel, it wasn't new, but it had been improved and it was now lighter and more compact and the, the artist could carry it out when they're walking. The new brushes, the circular metal clamp or ferrule, which secures the brush head to the handle, was now pressed flat and this created a flatter, wider shape. This is Claude Monet's brush. Moist watercolours in little pans had been invented some time previously, but now they also invented the collapsible tube to put watercolours and then oil paints, Oops. making it so much easier for artists to carry when they were going out painting. Also, synthetic pigments had now been invented as well by industrial chemists. And these were new vibrant shades like cobalt blue, cerulean blue, French ultramarine, zinc white, viridian green and chrome yellow, all of which we can see there in Monet's palette. So the new colours as well as the new brush strokes made the paintings look very new and very different. One important person that can't be overlooked when you're talking about invention and innovation. Paul Durong Rule was fundamental to the success and recognition of the Impressionist movement and was really one of the forerunners in the modern art market as we know it today. He promoted the artists and created an international network of galleries. He was the one who took Impressionism to America. The American artist Mary Cassatt played a significant role in making contacts for him with her people in the States. The American artists paid huge money for these new modern works and this set the artists on their way. Well now I think you can see from that that Innovation and invention had a huge effect on artists and artworks and that those artists who were affected by that not only went on to have huge careers themselves, but they were also the underpinning of the new modern movements that followed. So good luck with all the exams and hopefully a question like that will turn up for you. And uh, as I say, best of luck for June. So bye now, bye.